So my name is Carl Lemona, I'm a professor in economics in the University of Oslo and I'm interested in inequality, labour markets, welfare states and economic development in poor and rich countries. Uh, a coordinating lead author it's called in chapter 8. I, th I think it's a very good event that, that people with very different uh, experiences and different uh, disciplinary background come together and look for what are more feasible economically and, and politically uh, solutions to many of the problems in, in the world today and uh, many of these problems are related to inequality, uh, insecurity and uh, to uh, lack of development in many poor countries. So uh, this, I call it the inequality crisis, I think is very severe and therefore it's very important that many different types of uh, disciplinary background look at the same problems at the same time. I come from a part of the world where um, it's, it's more egalitarian than uh, elsewhere. I come from Scandinavian countries with, with the Scandinavian experience on inequality and welfare states and uh, strong unions, high taxation uh, and to many, uh, say in the US, uh, the experience we have in, in Northern Europe, that is something that shouldn't happen because uh, we have policies and institutions they believe that will lead to a macroeconomic catastrophe. But what we have actually had is, is much higher economic growth, much more participatory development that give uh, the fruits of economic growth to a wide uh, majority of the population. And where income differentials are much smaller, inequality is much lower, and uh, where there sort of is a more a shared prosperity in the whole uh, uh, populations of these small open economies. And I think that some of these experiences that are, is valuable also for developing countries or other more advanced countries as well, uh, doesn't mean that one should imitate uh, anything from Scandinavia, but one can learn for the good and the bad of the experience that, that we have and we try to sum, sum up these experiences uh, in a sensible manner for other countries to learn from. Uh, I would say that uh, some of the comparisons of uh, welfare state arrangement across countries and uh, explanations uh, for why some countries are much more narrow uh, inequality or less inequality than, than others, I think as valuable. Well. I've done very systematic comparison of OECD countries uh, since uh, 1970 till today, uh, both when it comes to welfare state arrangement and the consequences of welfare state uh, arrangement, union movements and, uh, and this like. I also have done research on uh, so that the lack of redistribution and social insurance in many developing countries. And I, rank, I can rank the countries by uh, the absence of a progressive policy, so to speak, in the sense that there are some more richer uh, countries uh, among the developing countries that doesn't share the, the gains from development equally in, in the population. So I can rank, for example, countries with rather high income per capita and at the same time very high poverty rates. They would, I consider them to be, I call them miserly countries. So I can rank all the countries and I can do this over time, uh, how miserly they are towards their uh, poor groups in society. So the most miserly country in, uh, in, in that ranking is actually South Africa, which is a surprise to many because they think about South Africa as having a progressive government, but uh, it is, South Africa is a rather rich country in Africa and it has way too high poverty rates compared to its resources all in all. We also rank or we, we look at the development of, uh, of these things for the whole world how miserly uh, the whole world are to uh, uh, the group of poor people in, in the entire world and we find that the world as a whole become more and more miserly as, as we move on and today the world as, as a whole is equally miserly towards all the poor in the world as South Africa is to their poor group.